While the issue continues to get talked about, about what do we do ultimately about education in Fairhope, whether that's a city school or not, is there something to be done in the meantime? Because every year that we don't do something to address the problems in the school is another year children get further behind, which is what nobody wants to see. I know y'all don't, we don't, parents or grandparents, because the community has a has a stake in that. So Diana's gonna talk to you a little about that. Thank you, uh, Diana Brewer. Um, as Robert said and alluded to, um, the reason we kind of came about with this plan for what we're calling an education advisory committee is because truly there seems to be no one minding the store, so to speak. If you look at just the Fairhope schools, there's no one person or no one entity that's really looking at the plan. What is the plan for the Fairhope schools? What are we doing about technology? What are we doing about curriculum? Um, there is, of course, a Baldwin County Board of Ed, but they're overseeing many, many schools and many, many students, but you really can't point to any one person or body that's um, really taking care of the Fairhope community's needs regarding education. So we, have we are proposing this Education Advisory Committee that would be a city of Fairhope appointed committee, much like other city committees, um, to sort of develop a plan for the use of, of additional city resources for our schools. We envision and be in five members, five members from the community plus a city council person that would serve on this committee. And they would work very closely with um, our principals, our assistant principals, teachers, and the community to sort of find out what the needs are and what the priorities are. Then they would, this EAC, as we're, as we're calling this Education Advisory Committee, would then make recommendations back to the city council as to how the city could help fulfill some of those needs, providing resources, funding, whatever it might be. Um, then, of course, the city council would have the final approval of appropriations based on the EAC's recommendations. We also would envision that the EAC would work very closely with the school administrators and our own Baldwin County Board of Ed member to, to ensure that if the city of Fairhope puts in additional funds into the Fairhope schools, that the, that the Baldwin County Board of Ed doesn't reduce the funding that we get. To, you know, in place of that this money or resources or whatever it is, is on top of what we're already getting from the county and that would be very important. Um, we would, uh, we put out a timeline here for you. We'd love to see this happen um, between November and December of this year and then in the spring we, uh, to, for you all to appoint this EAC uh, by December and then in the spring, January through March, the EAC would work closely with our, with the community, with the principals, with teachers and, and sort of help come up with that list of, of uh, priorities, what, what, what's needed in our schools, what's important to the community at this time, and what can we as a community do to help fulfill those needs. And, um, and then maybe in March, EAC would report back to the City Council with some recommendations. Um, we'd love to see the discussion happen between April and June with the City Council, with the Finance Committee, and, and see what's, what's available within our, within our own means, within the city, what's available to our schools. Um, as you're working on the following year's budget, you know, obviously we're talking about, about financial um, support for the schools, um, but being able to really have a discussion between April and June about what's available and, and what can we do. Um, you know, there's potential resources out there. Um, we certainly are not here to say where that money would come from. That would be up to you. I mean, we know that there's possibly it could come from our city sales tax. It could possibly come from a separate tax district or the utilities or uh, just a general fund. That that obviously is not our our role. Um, and then on the back side, as you'll see there, we have recommendations for what this committee should be made up. We, we feel very strongly this is not a good to great committee. This is not a yes we can committee or FIF. This is, this is above all of us. And we would like to see uh, this committee be comprised of people who really understand education, who have some experience, whether they're, you know, right here in our community, we have several former school superintendents who have retired here that would bring a wealth of, and depth of knowledge and experience to the table that could really uh, make a difference for us. Um, we think it would be nice to have a, you know, maybe a former principal on this committee and maybe someone from outside the city limits in the feeder pattern who's who don't live within our city limits, but who are obviously affected by what happens in the Fairhope schools, um, and some business leaders. 
And, um, and then we provided a list of 12 names of people that these are strictly, we know none of these people have been contacted. They may all say no, but, um, but it is 12 people that we, we thought of that have these qualifications that we think would, um, would serve our community very well in this role. So, uh, and that's it. Well, I said all along that I think we need an educational committee to keep the council and myself abreast of what are the needs in our schools. You know, it's hard to go up there and ask the superintendent or the school board or, or anybody if you don't know exactly what the needs, because you know you have this group over here that says things, you know, we hear from five or six different groups. But if we could pull it all together and have one group helping to lead the charge that's independent of the school board that can help us make intelligent decisions and I think this is the first step. Uh, I hope that we also will support Yes We Can initiative because that's also whether we go into our own schools or not. If we don't get more funding for Baldwin County Schools it's going to hurt the whole region and uh, I'd hate to see commerce stop because when these industries are looking in Mobile and Bowen County to locate, the first thing we look at is education. And if we're not on the same level with Mobile and Bowen County and the rest uh, in the area, and one area does real well, like a Fairhope or, or Daphne or so forth, and the rest of the area is not doing well, I think that really hurts recruitment. And whatever anybody wants to say, business is what generates the revenue for all the amenities that we all enjoy. And whether it's located here or somewhere else, we all benefit from that business being located in Bowen County or Mobile. So I would hope that that's the thrust of the committee is to get these thoughts, give us solution, or some solutions to the problems so we can make intelligent decisions.